Leprechaun 2, also known as Leprechaun 2, One Wedding and Lots of Funerals, is a 1994 American comedy horror film and the second film in the Leprechaun series. It was released in 1994 and it is the final entry in the series to be released theatrically. Once again, it centers on a sadistically evil leprechaun. This time, he's not only hunting for his gold, but he's hunting a bride. This film takes place exactly one year after the first film. It's March 17, 1994. The leprechaun is now a thousand years old. But the movie opens up with this guy running away from the leprechaun and suddenly and randomly and magically the leprechaun is back in Ireland. There is no explanation as to how he got to Ireland because this film does not mention the previous characters from the original film. As I told you before, if you're a person that depends on continuity, then you've picked the wrong series because this series has no continuity whatsoever, all except for the leprechaun wanting his gold. The one thing I don't like about this movie is that it has too many rules. Now according to this film, if a bride sneezes three times, then the leprechaun has the power to choose her, unless someone intervenes by uttering the phrase, God bless you. Now, see, this is what I'm saying. Now, also in this movie, according to the rules, if you capture the leprechaun, you get three wishes. Where was this in the first film? But then again, nobody actually captured him in the first film. Wait a minute, that's not true. What's that guy's name? Dan O'Grady from the first movie? He captured the leprechaun. How come he didn't get three wishes? But anyway, this guy named William O'Day is running from the leprechaun because he discovers that the person that the leprechaun wants to marry is his own daughter. So he saves her by saying, God bless you. And then the leprechaun snaps his neck. And he has to wait a thousand years. And he meets a descendant of the O'Day family named Bridget Callum. And she's played by Siobhan Durkin. It turns out that she's related to the O'Day family. Which is why the leprechaun comes for her a thousand years later. You also have this guy named Morty Ingalls. And he's played by the late... Sandy Barron. He passed away in January of 2001. January 21st, 2001 to be exact. So this movie is basically about this guy named Cody Ingalls. And he's played by Charlie Heath. And they're just your average couple. They have their ups and downs. But the guy, Cody's grandfather... Morty Ingalls is basically a swindler. He likes to trick people. He's a shyster, a con artist. And he talks these people into taking what's called a dark side tour, which is when he puts you in this hearse and he supposedly takes you to haunted locations like Houdini's ruins and the home of Jane Mansfield or something like that. Out of nowhere, the leprechaun comes back, as I pointed out, even though he died in a well at the end of the last one. He goes to Bridget's house, and Cody's there. Cody tries to save her, but to no avail, because the leprechaun has magical powers. How can he fight something like that? So he kidnaps Bridget, but he accidentally drops one of his gold coins, and the gold coin conveniently slips right into Cody's hand. But, again, like I said, the rules have changed in this movie. Because according to Leprechaun 2, if you are in possession of one of the gold coins, then the Leprechaun can't hurt you. 
He kidnaps Bridget and takes Bridget back to his lair, which is really a tree. And he tells her that he's going to marry her. And then, but he licks her face. So now leprechauns rape people. He tells her he wants her to have his children. And long story short, Cody, portrayed by Charlie Heath, tells his grandfather that, or his uncle or whatever he's supposed to be, but anyway, he tells Morty, a leprechaun did it, and Morty's like, you're crazy, leprechauns don't exist. And then that's when he shows Morty the coin, and when the leprechaun appears to Morty, he has no choice but to believe him. So then they devise a plan on how to get Bridget back, and Morty reminds Cody that as long as the leprechaun is around them, he can't hurt Bridget, because even though he has magical powers, he can't be in two places at one time. So while Bridget is at the leprechaun's lair, the leprechaun is at a bar getting drunk with Morty. This is all a ruse to get the leprechaun so drunk that he can't use his powers to kill anybody, but to no avail because the leprechaun soon sobers up and kills one of the bartenders played by Michael McDonald. Then Morty's greed goes against them because he captures the leprechaun with a safe that's made of wrought iron. That's another rule they have in here. Apparently wrought iron can also hurt the leprechaun. But when he captures the leprechaun, the leprechaun offers him three wishes. The first wish that he makes is that he wishes to have the leprechaun's gold. So the leprechaun says, done, and he's got the gold. The second wish is the leprechaun puts the pot of gold in Morty's stomach because he said he wished for the pot of gold. He didn't say how he wanted it, so the leprechaun puts it in his stomach. So then he makes a second wish that the door would be open so he can get out of the safe and help him. So the leprechaun says, do you wish to let me out? And Morty says, yes. Next thing you know, the leprechaun is out of the safe. But the pot of gold is still in Morty's stomach and he's in pain. So then he says, I wish you would get it out of me. And the leprechaun says, are you sure? Morty says, yes. The next thing you know, the leprechaun takes his fingernails and digs it out of Morty's stomach. I also want to point out that the leprechaun killed Bridget's friend, Ian. And he is played by Adam Beesk. See, Ian had a crush on Bridget and the leprechaun used that to his advantage because Ian tried to hit on Bridget and Bridget refused him. So when Ian was still standing outside, the leprechaun did some kind of magic trick that made him think Bridget was standing there even though he saw Bridget go in the house. That's the part that doesn't make any sense. But it was really a fan. But the leprechaun disguised the fan as Bridget's breast. And he tries to kiss the breast, but it cuts his face all up. After Bridget gets kidnapped, as I said, they're devising a plan. And while the leprechaun is in the safe, Cody finally makes it to the lair where Bridget is. And the leprechaun plays this game of hide and seek with them. Bridget tries to stab the leprechaun with some kind of tool that looks like a screwdriver but it doesn't work the leprechaun disguises himself as Bridget tries to trick Cody into giving him the coin but the coin was actually a piece of milk chocolate disguised as gold so he takes the bar of wrought iron and he stabs the leprechaun in the heart and the leprechaun explodes and he's dead at least until the sequel leprechaun 3 
Now he's going to make his way to Las Vegas. This series is very cheesy, but I have to give it to the producers. They're very dedicated. I mean, they made six of these movies. Six of them. And this is the cheesiest franchise I've ever seen. But these movies, I don't know, they were just really cheesy. It was started by Mark Jones. I don't think Mark Jones had anything to do with the third movie, though. I could be wrong. But I don't think he was involved in the third movie. But the Leprechaun explodes, like I said. The movie's over. Bridget and Cody are reunited. And everyone lives happily ever after. Until the third movie. This has been Leprechaun 2, a.k.a. Leprechaun 2, One Wedding and Lots of Funerals. It was released April 8th, 1994. I'm the Michael Myers fanatic. I approve this message. Leprechaun 2, a.k.a. Leprechaun 2, One Wedding and Lots of Funerals. Thank you very much.